Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Jai Krishna Balaram. Hey, Jai Giri Govardhan, Giri Govardhan, Giri Govardhan, Jai Giri Govardhan. Nithai Gora Hari Bhong Hari Bhong Hari Bhong Gora Hari Bhong Hari Bhong Nithai Gora Hari Bhong Gora Pemanande Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Thank you very rare I see you playing the drum. Huh? You're good. You, you play good. Jaya Jaya. I need to increase my insurance when he does that. <laughs> Gotta pay my premiums. <laughs> jaya Jaya. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Ti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvashisha Sunyavadi Paschatyare Satarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This verse is uh, chapter 4, Bhagavad Gita, text number 9. And um, when uh, Prabhupada was asked, of course he was asked this question quite often, what is the most important verse in the Bhagavad Gita, when Prabhupada said 4 9. Mm-hmm. 4 9. He said that on maybe a couple occasions. He might have send, said uh, 1865 on another occasion. <laughs> but this verse is quite to the point in terms of becoming Krishna conscious. Because if you realize the verse, you're fully Krishna conscious. So we'll begin. Janma karma chime divyam Evam yo veti tattvataha Takva deham purnam janma Naiti mameti sarjuna Janma karma chime divyam Evam yo veti tatvataha Takva deham punam janma Naiti mam eti sarjuna Janma karma chime divyam Evam yo veti tatvataha Takva deham punam janma Naiti mameti sarjuna
जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम एवं योगिति तत्वतहम तत्वदेहम पुनर्जन्म नैति ममेति सुर्जुना Janma, birth, karma, work, cha, also, may, of mine, divyam, transcendental, evam, like this, ya, anyone who, veti, knows, taktvataha, in reality, taktva, leaving aside, dehum, this body, puna, again, janma, birth, na, never, ete, does attain, mum, unto me, ete, does attain, sa, he, Arjuna, O Arjuna. So translation, one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains to my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Please repeat, one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities. does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Srila Prabhupada's purport, the Lord's descent from his transcendental abode is already explained in the sixth verse. One who can understand the truth of the appearance of the personality of Godhead is already liberated from material bondage, and therefore he refer, refer, returns to the kingdom of Godhead, kingdom of God, immediately after quitting this present material body. Such liberation of the living entity from material bondi, bondage is not at all easy. The impersonalists and the yogis attain liberation only after much trouble and many, many births. Even then, the liberation they achieve, merging into the impersonal Brahman and Brahma Jyoti of the Lord, is only partial, and there is a risk of returning to this material world. But the devotee, simply by understanding the transcendental nature of the body and activities of the Lord, attains the boat of the Lord after ending this body, and does not run the risk of returning to this material world. In the Brahma Samhita 5.33, it is stated that the Lord has many, many forms and incarnations, Advaitam, Achutam, Anadim, Anantarupam. Although there are many transcendental forms of the Lord, they are still one in the same Supreme Personality of Godhead. One has to understand this fact with conviction, although it is incomprehensible to mundane scholars and empirical philosophers. As stated in the Vedas, Purusha Bodhini Upanishads Eko Devu Nityan Lila Nurakto Bhakta Vyakpi Ridyantar Atma. The one supreme personality of God is eternally engaged in many, many transcendental forms in relationship with his unalloyed devotees. This Vedic, Vedic, Vedic version is confirmed in the verse of the Gita personally by the Lord. 
He who accepts this truth on the strength of the authority of the Vedas and of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and who does not waste time in philosophical speculations, attains the highest perfectional stage of liberation. Simply by accepting this faith, truth on faith, one can without a doubt attain liberation. The Vedic version Tattomasi is actually applied in this case. Anyone who understands Lord Krishna to be the Supreme, who says, or who says unto the Lord, You are the Supreme Brahman, the Personality of Godhead, is certainly liberated instantly, and consequently his entrance into the Transcendental Association of the Lord is guaranteed. In other words, such a faithful devotee of the Lord attains perfection, and this is confirmed by the following Vedic assertion. Tvam eva vidi vidit vati mitam eti nanya panta vidyate yanaya. One can attain the perfect stage of liberation from birth and death simply by knowing the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and there is no other way to achieve this perfection. Sweta was Swatara Upanishads 3.8. That there is no alternative means that anyone who does not understand Lord Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead is surely in the mode of ignorance and consequently he will not attain salvation simply, so to speak, by licking the outer surface of the bottle of honey or by interpreting the Bhagavad Gita according to mundane scholarship. Such empirical philosophers, empiric philosophers may assume very important roles in the material world, but they are not necessarily eligible for liberation. Such puffed-up mundane scholars have to wait for the causeless mercy of the devotee of the Lord. One should therefore cultivate Krishna consciousness with faith and knowledge in this way attain perfection. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudamani Pacharine Nirishesha Sunyavadi Pastyatyade Satarine Vanchakopa Tarubisja Kripa Sindhu Pyebacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namahona Maha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Hadwaita Gadad Har Sivasati Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Krishna says, one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal boat, Arjuna. So Krishna's activities are called divyam. Divyam means not part of this material world, transcendental. Transcendental means above the dental. Dental refers to the material. Trans means to rise above. Rising above the material energy means to be situated on the spiritual platform. And the Lord, because his body is by nature spiritual, and he is the source of everything, therefore he is always divyap, he is always transcendental. He appears in this world like an ordinary person. He has a mother, a father, and he sometimes he, he talks about how he be, how he actually, you know, takes birth. They call also they go through the whole process of cutting the uh, umbilical cord, the whole process of birth. But actually, it's just part of his what we say play. He plays like an ordinary human being. For those who have no faith, for those who have faith, know that he never touches the material energy. Although he appears to be part of and involved with the material energy. And to know that is the process of bhakti. 
And therefore, one has to hear regularly the transcendental activities of the Lord. But here, Prabhupada makes the point, we have to accept the truth on faith. Faith is the principle by which we can make progress in devotional service. In this material world, people put their faith in different things and sometimes they find themselves getting disappointed or being cheated because of that. And therefore, when it comes to putting faith in something transcendental, they also find themselves having a difficult time because of past experiences with other situations. But therefore, before you can actually what we say develop what is called strata. Strata means that faith which is not broken in any any situation. One has to regularly hear about the nature of the Lord and and his activities. And also by accepting the the principle of authority. Here's what we find it sometimes a little bit people question authority. And the question authority is also a form of intelligence. But to question to understand and not the question to reject. In this material world, people present themselves as an authority and pose themselves as being qualified to help others or guide others, but they fall short many times of the statements they profess to do. But in the, in the spiritual world, um, the authority is Krishna. And Krishna makes his, uh, his authority known through his pure devotees. Therefore, one who hears from Krishna, by hearing from those who are perfectly Krishna conscious, is hearing directly from Krishna, although it's coming through another personality. So, therefore, accepting that whatever Krishna says or Krishna does is perfect. How can we get to that point? Well, we have the principle that whatever God is perfect, otherwise there's no question of giving any label of God unless he is actually perfect. But what does it mean to be perfect? It means that whatever he does or says is for the benefit of everyone, not just for a few people or not just for a particular time and circumstance, just like we're reading Bhagavad Gita now. Well, Bhagavad Gita was spoken 5,000 years ago, a minimum, maybe even longer. But it's still relevant today because Krishna, when he presents something, it, it's not subject to time, place, and circumstance. It's, uh, it's actually eternal religious principles that apply according to one's understanding, but they always apply. You have to learn how to apply the principles. But the principle of faith is a principle of the nature of a living being. We all have faith in something. You can't even get up in the morning unless you have faith. <laughs> right? How many of you, you know, travel on airplanes? Yeah. Any of you have been on airplanes before? Yeah. How, many, how, much, how much do you know about the pilot? <laughs> you don't even know his name. <laughs> But you have faith that he's going to get you there, or you have faith in the airlines that they're 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 authorized uh, company that is can take you to your destination. So you may uh, you may not know the pilot, but you have faith that this airline is what we say bona fide and can do its job. So we we accept faith in this material world many times. We have faith that when we get up. The day is going to be a good day, right? <laughs> we or we have a day day that we have our plans, and we're going to somehow or other be able to execute our plans, fulfill our needs. So we all we live by the principle of faith. But then again, there where's that faith that's never broken under any circumstance, and that comes from the perfect authority. So therefore, you see, in any, any, not only religion, philosophical system, or any system of subordination and superiority, there is always the principle of faith. So in Krishna consciousness, therefore, one has to have faith in the words of the Lord. But then again, how do we know those, those words are actually applicable to me? 
Well, we can also see that others have gone before us and have achieved success. So here's another how faith becomes strong. When we see examples of others who have somehow or other accepted the words of the Lord, practiced the process given by the Lord, and have attained what we say, what we say perfection in spiritual life. We can see by example. And we can also see in our own lives that whatever level of practice we started at and where we are now is different. Which where we are now is different. Many of us weren't following the four regulative principles. No illicit sex, no intoxication, no meeting, and no gambling. Which goes on in the material world as a regular affair from everybody. And everyone thinks that's normal. And not only is it normal, it's something to go for. But devotees have been come out of that, what we say, that that lifestyle, have now given that all up. And they don't even look back and think, well, am I missing something? No, because they have, they, they practice the process, they have faith that it works, and they have the strength to carry on despite the fact that these things are always available. <laughs> so this faith is very important. So, and that faith is increased by hearing. Srinvata Svakata Krishna, Purnya Shravana Kirtanaha, Rid Yanto Sto Abhadrani, Rid Yanoti Srihit Satam. Krishna speaks this verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. By regular hearing and by execution of devotional service, all that is inauspicious in the heart is practically destroyed. And one starts to realize what you're hearing. When we hear Krishna's pastimes or pastimes of any of the incarnations of the Lord, sometimes they seem to be so far beyond, you know, belief. They seem so fantastic or so, uh, what we say, uh, almost mythological or something created by someone. But Prabhupada would always say, "What is the? Why does the Acharyas, great spiritual teachers, have to do with creating some kind of fiction?" They're actually writing things that are beyond our level of realization. And they're not just philosophically writing this from a theoretical point of view. They're actually realizing these things. Just like uh, there is a level of spiritual practice where you can actually develop meditation on Krishna's pastimes and see the pastimes as if you were watching television. <laughs> yeah. That's a level of spiritual consciousness, a very high level of spiritual consciousness, through absorption and chanting of the holy name and perfecting one's execution and devotional service, where Krishna's pastimes become manifested in your mind and in your heart. They're actually there, but they're covered. because we're covered by the material energy, they remain hidden. But through that successful execution of devotional service, these things go on. How these? How do these great acharyas writing these books on the leelas of Krishna in Vrindavan and other places? Because they're seeing the pastimes. They're seeing them. They're actually watching them. They're actually in, in meditation upon these things, and they're writing down what they what they're experiencing. So. Therefore, when we hear about great souls who have traversed the path of bhakti, have become perfect, easily given up all the activities of the material world, and at the same time are teaching others to do the same, then that really is something that is strongly fortifying or strengthening our faith. We can look to that. And say, oh well, that look at that person. They they they've attained such a high level of spirituality. If I simply follow that path, mahajano yena katasapanta. If I follow the path that they follow, I can also attain perfection like that. So this is where faith becomes what we say understandable, simply by observing others who have successfully tra traversed the path. And again, the process of hearing is foundational for purifying the heart. 
Srinvatas Vakata oh we said that verse. Satam Prasangam Mamma Virya Sambido Bhavadanti Hit Karna Rasayana Kata. By hearing regularly Krishna's pastimes. Jan Mastami is coming up. Jana Mastami. Krishna takes birth. Does he take birth? There's one verse in the Bhagavatam it says the unborn takes birth. This is spoken by uh, Queen Kuti in the eighth chapter of the first canto of Bhagavad Tam, where she speaks and how uh, is the unborn is taking birth. Krishna is never born because spirit never changes. When Krishna was speaking to Arjun, he said, you know, both you and I, you know, have been through many births, but you've forgotten, but I don't forget because I don't change my body. When you change your body, you forget from life to life. But because Krishna's body is pure spiritual, he doesn't change. He keeps the same transcendental body. Therefore, he's always aware of everything at all places at all times. And Arjun got the message because when Krishna said, you know, I spoke this, uh, this message to the sun god, Vivashwan, 40,000 40, years ago, Or he said, you were there also, Arjun. <laughs> But you don't remember because you changed your body. I don't. I remember. So the, this is the process of developing that faith by hearing more and more about the transcendental leelas of the Lord. Just like as we mentioned that Krishna takes birth. But give you an analogy And you, you, there are people who used to think that the, the sun comes up in the morning for the first time, it goes through the orbit, and at the end of the day, it dies. And then the next day, the sun is reborn again and does the same thing day after day. So they, that was actually a philosophy or a way of thinking. That was, of course, obviously wrong, but that was prominent. Because people weren't seeing the sun at night, for at least that point, and they were thinking the sun is God. But the sun is always in its orbit somewhere in the, in the cosmolog cosmological arrangement. It appears, goes through its orbit, and disappears, and goes somewhere else until its next, what we say, uh, sunrise. So Krishna is like that. He appears... One time, and, and he takes birth, apparently, goes through his pastimes on earth, disappears, goes to another universe, performs the same activity again, and then again, after that's done, he does, he goes to another universe. So Prabhupada would also say, Krishna is performing his activities in different universes even now. You could even, go, if you know where he was and what where he was performing in a particular activity, you could also go to that universe, just like he performed activities on this planet 5,000 years ago in Vrindavan. And he was here for 125, what we say, earth years. And after 125 years, he disappeared and went someplace else to do the same thing. The only difference is that when, when he goes from place to place, the basic leelas are the same, but the details change. He changes in detail. So if you were able to go to see the same Leela in another universe, you would see there would be certain details that would be different from place to place. But that's Krishna. Yeah, he's transcendental. So we talk about Janmastami. Janma, Janma means birth. <laughs> Astami means the eighth day after the particular, what was it, the moon? The eighth day. So... The eighth day after the moon, the, the Lord takes birth. But actually, He never takes birth. He's always transcendental. And He's always free from touching the material energy. Just like, we even have an example. Just like, when sometimes when it's raining out, very, and you have your umbrella, you have proper rain coats and everything, and the rain is hitting you, And in your umbrella, but you remain completely dry. Why? Because you're in, you're in a different atmosphere. You're being protected. So in the same way, 
uh, one who is transcendental may appear to do things like everyone else in this world, but, at the, but they don't touch this world. So Krishna never touches the material world. So his, that's why Krishna says, one who knows, this is the important point, one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains to my abode. What he's saying is, if I tell you, is that enough? And you say, I believe it. But what he's, the Prabhupada says here, uh, it's not so easy. <laughs> In other words, you, if you believe it, you're 50% that way. You're 50% away that you realize that Krishna's activities are divya, transcendental. But when you realize it through your own bhakti, then you have reached liberation. In other words, you're not part of this material world. You also attain the same thing. Although, and we see that even, even great souls in this, who come to the material world, they don't touch this world. They're not affected by this world. I'll give you an example with Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada was, was uh, in London, and he was staying at John Lennon's estate in Tittenhurst. And he would... Uh, Prabhupada always liked to take his morning walk every day because you know, this was his way of uh, getting out and uh, getting some exercise. So uh, Jamuna, his very senior female disciple, was there and she really loved Prabhupada. And Prabhupada really had a lot of affection for her because she had so much devotion for Prabhupada. So Prabhupada and her would go on morning walks together, just the two of them. And one time, uh, they were walking, and Jamuna was thinking, I'm going to walk behind Prabhupada and walk in his footsteps. And so, the, and she's walking, and she can see her own footprints, but she can't see Prabhupada's. She can't see Prabhupada's. And then she's a little bewildered. She's thinking, I'm going to walk in his footprints, but I don't see any footprints. This was given by her when she... Her diary later, she revealed this. And then Prabhupada, she said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, you know, I'm trying to follow in your footprints, but there's no footprints. And Prabhupada said, that will be revealed later. <laughs> you know, sometimes people would say Prabhupada never touched the world. Uh, sometimes when he would be walking so fast, I mean, I mean the devotees were 20 years old, and Prabhupada was in his 70s, and he could walk, and you couldn't walk. You'd have to run just to keep up with him, <laughs> really. And there's many examples. These young boys were running next to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada was walking. <laughs> so Prabhupada wasn't part of this world. He came to do a mission, and he went back. After he was done, he went back to his the spiritual world. So there are personalities who come, and what to speak of Krishna? He definitely doesn't touch this material world because he's the one that gives the power for others who are also transcendental to be free from material contact like that. So, like that. So this is the, so this verse, as we mentioned earlier, is one of the key verses that if you know within yourself completely that Krishna's appearance and activities are divyam, transcendental, then you're liberated. You're not going to take birth again in this world. Mm -hmm. So that's a process to go through. And uh, the process mainly is hearing from Krishna and hearing from Krishna's pure devotee. And especially hearing Krishna's pastimes. Because if you hear Krishna's pastimes enough, especially if you hear the same one over and over again, each time you hear it, you get so much more information. And you can start to understand it more and more. It's not that we have to read so many different pastimes in order to be, you know, Krishna conscious. But if you can, if you know one pastime completely and realize that, 
you're back to Godhead. <laughs> That's all it takes. <laughs> That's how powerful it is. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It reminds me of one story, one very senior devotee in our movement. He was, he was traveling around India before he became a devotee. And he was associating with some Ram Bhaktas. And so they, were, they would get together every night and they would speak Ram Kata. But they would speak in the local language. He didn't understand anything. And they could also speak English, but they didn't. So he asked them, why are you you're not speaking in English? And they said, because you're not a devotee of Ram, you're a devotee of Krishna. <laughs> they told him that. <laughs> so there was one Ram Bhakta there who knew one Krishna pastime, and that was Krishna stealing butter. <laughs> So every time this devotee would come, he would narrate that pastime. And then the devotee said, every night you're telling me the same pastime of Krishna stealing butter. He said, I'm a Ram Bhakti. That's the only one I know. <laughs> it's the only pastime I know. So he was hearing the same pastime every night over and over and over again. And it was, he said, and it's actually quite relishable. It's not like, well, I heard that pastime, well, give me something new. That's not Krishna consciousness. <laughs> the more you hear the same pastime over and over again, the more you actually go deeper into the meaning and get realization of Krishna in his pastimes. <laughs> okay, so we're running on word here. Any comments or questions? Janma Karma, yes. Hare Krishna, thank you for your lecture, Maharaj. I read something interesting in relation to this verse. Uh, Srila Prabhupada says in commentary in Srimad Bhagavatam that we cannot really understand God, but our best bet is to abide by His rules. Yeah. When you abide by his instructions, you receive his mercy, and by his mercy you can understand things. If you don't follow the instructions, you won't get the mercy. And if you don't get the mercy, how can you understand? Mm -hmm. You think philosophical study and having great, great intelligence will, will open up your, your awareness of God? No. You have to be a bhakta. That's why Krishna says, I only reveal myself to devotees, not to the non-devotees, or not to the, the uh, philosophical academicians who, who study scripture from an academic point of view, but still they can't understand God because they don't get the mercy. You need mercy. Everything comes by way of mercy. You're following instructions, you get mercy. If you don't follow instructions, how can you expect the mercy? And mercy is what, what makes the difference. Mercy means that Krishna gives you the realizations of the knowledge you're looking for. He reveals it to you. He guides you. He protects you. He inspires you. Mercy comes in different forms. Mother Yasoda couldn't bind Krishna. But only when Krishna agreed to be bound up was she able to do it. It took his permission for her to become successful, same way. Our efforts in Krishna consciousness simply bring the mercy. But the mercy is what is what makes the difference between success and failure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so following the instructions is the first principle because disciple means comes from the word discipline. Without discipline, there's no such thing as disciple. It's just a word. <laughs> Anybody, you like that one, huh? <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. I like it too. <laughs> 
etymological root word of disciple is discipline. <laughs> Anything else? Any other questions? Yeah. Ananta, you look like you want to say something. No? Change your mind, huh? Hare Krishna, thank you. Uh, I'm just wondering why I don't have any questions, any... any never. <laughs> well, there's two things. Yes. Either you know everything or you don't know what to ask. <laughs> so I'll give you the I'll give you the scientific principle for understanding questions or not questions. So there's a principle called the science of hearing. It's like there's a science of speaking, there's a science of hearing. Science of hearing means one, to have faith in the speaker. Two, to be humble or to be submissive to the words that are being said. Three, is to destroy the faults of the mind. That means when the mind wanders away from the sound, bring the mind back. And the fourth one is the result of the first three. And that is... If you're here, if you're following those first three, two things happen, or one of two things happen. One, you get realizations of what is being said. In other words, you agree and you can understand. Or two, there's questions. So if you don't get either one of those, that means you weren't tuned in. <laughs> Because if something something you don't understand or something you don't agree with, you ask a question. But if you're hearing nicely and it's clear and you're you're understanding and getting 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 realizations, oh yes, that makes sense. Then you're that means you are hearing nicely also. So is that what you're getting? You agree with everything. I mean, you not only agree, but you actually understand what is being said, yeah. Then that's, that's, that's perfect. But if you're not, if you don't understand or don't agree, and then questions should be there mm -hmm. for clarification. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, is that it? Okay, thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. <laughs>